Assalamu alaikum in today's video we are looking at the most evergreen game in the history of the chess this game was played between Adolf Anderson and Jean Dufresne if we talk about Adolf Anderson he does not need any introduction he was the German chess master and he was considered to be the best chess player at the time and if we talk about the Jean Dufresne he was not the world class player but he was the very famous chess author this game was played in the year 1852 which means this game is one 172 years old this game is famous for the many sacrifices and tactics but the main reason of this game popularity is adolf anderson beautiful tactic which stops his opponent from doing castling on any side of the board and how he punished his opponent king in the center that's the reason why we are looking at this game in this video so now without wasting any time let's look at this game in this game adolf anderson was playing as a white so he started the game with the e4 now e5 knight to f3 knight to c6 bishop to c4 italian game black played bishop to c5 and adolf anderson played b4 this is ivan's gambit and the main purpose behind this move is to distract this dark square bishop from this a7 to g1 diagonal and if in this position black accept the sacrifice uh, then white can have some lead in the development and yes that's what happened in the game black played bishop captures on b4 so now c3 attacking the bishop and now bishop goes to a5 adolf anderson played b4 going for the center and also offering this pawn exchange black accepted he played e captures on d4 but adolf anderson didn't capture the pawn back instead he played castle on the king side and black in this position played b3 uh, but if we go back uh, black can also play this uh, d captures on c3 move but now adolf anderson can play queen to b3 attacking this f7 pawn and after bishop captures on f7 check a black king would not be able to do castling on any side of the board so he can play this queen to f6 guarding this f7 square but now white can play this e5 attacking the queen and after queen to g6 we can win this pawn back very easily maybe that's the reason why he didn't capture the pawn in this position but still the d3 is not the best move in this position black should have played this knight g to e7 or knight to f6 preparing this castle on the king side but he missed it and he played b3 but adolf anderson goes with the plan he played queen to b3 attacking this f7 square so now queen to f6 guarding this f7 pawn and after e5 he played queen to g6 guarding this f7 pawn and now also guarding this d3 pawn anderson developed his rook with the rook to e1 and now black played knight g2 e7 preparing for the castling on the next move white played bishop to a3 attacking this knight on the e7 square and now according to the stockfish uh, the best move for the black in this position was castling on the king side but he missed it and he played b5 b5 is a pure pawn sacrifice because now if anderson play bishop captures on b5 or queen captures on b5 then black can play rook to b8 developing his rook with the tempo yes anderson accept the sacrifice he played queen captures on b5 black played rook to b8 developing his rook with the tempo so now queen to a4 so now stop the video and try to find how can white win the bishop in this position well if in this position black plays some random move uh, something like uh, king side castling then white can play bishop captures on e7 and if we look at the knight on the c6 this knight is overworked this knight was guarding this knight on the e7 and now also guarding this bishop on the a5 but after bishop captures on e7 if he play knight captures on e7 then white can win this bishop with the queen captures on a5 that's the reason why after queen to a4 black played bishop to b6 saving his bishop and now white played knight b to d2 developing his last minor piece and black also developed his last minor piece with the bishop to b7 now white continued the game with the knight to e4 knight to e4 is developing this knight to the very powerful square and also stopping this queen from guarding this d3 pawn which means on the next move white can play bishop captures on d3 and in this position black played it queen to f5 queen to f5 is a mistake i am unable to find any valid reason behind this queen to f5 move well white goes with the plan he played bishop captures on d3 and now he is threatening some nasty discover checks like if black didn't move his queen uh, then on the next move white can play this knight to d6 check that's why in this position black played queen to h5 and now adolf anderson sacrificed his knight with the knight to f6 check according to the stockfish this is a mistake uh, but the idea 
idea behind this move is a very powerful black is forced to capture this knight uh, because if you don't capture it uh, then obviously he can win your queen that's why black in this position played uh, g captures on f6 and after e captures on f6 white has this e open file and now just look at the white position his all pieces are attacking the black king just look at this powerful light square bishop this queen attacking the king this dark square bishop is also attacking this knight on the e7 and on the next move he can play something like rook a to d1 making this attack even more powerful and this is the dream position for every attacker in the chess game well black continued the game with the rook to g8 this is the best move in this position because this rook is now pinning this g2 pawn which means black can play queen captures on f3 but adolf anderson didn't care about this knight he again sacrificed this knight with a rook a to d1 but if we go back it looks like that adolf anderson can win a knight with the f captures on e7 but that's not the case because now black can play queen captures on f3 and now he is threatening the checkmate on the g2 square if you play g3 then he can play queen captures on f2 check and after king to h1 queen to f3 is a checkmate let's say in this position you don't play g3 move instead you play a bishop to e4 but now rook captures on g2 check and after king to h1 black can sacrifice his queen with the knight to e5 move after bishop captures on f3 bishop captures on f3 if you are thinking about rook captures on e5 then rook to g4 is a checkmate that's why in this position rook captures on e5 is not possible you can play a queen to f4 but now rook captures on f2 check and after king to g1 rook to g2 check and now white has two options king to h1 or king to f1 it does not matter whatever you play because rook to g1 is a checkmate that's the reason why adolf anderson didn't capture the knight in this position he played rook a to d1 sacrificing his knight and black accept this knight sacrifice which is a blunder because now white get a chance to play rook captures on e7 check and from this position black has three options the first one is king to f8 but after rook to e3 discover check white is winning this position because of massive material advantage that's why in this position king to f8 does not work another option is king to d8 but now we can play rook captures on d7 check a rook sacrifice capturing this rook is not good for the black because this move is leading to a checkmate that's why king to c8 but now rook to d8 check again rook sacrifice and now black king is forced to capture it king captures on d8 and after bishop to e2 check again white is winning this position because of the massive material advantage so king to f8 does not work king to d8 is also not working for the black that's why in this position he played knight captures on e7 but this move still does not save the game and now there is a checkmate by force in the next four moves so stop the video and try to find the winning move for Adolf Anderson. Well, he found it and he played a beautiful queen captures on d7 check a brilliant queen sacrifice and why this is a brilliant because now black has two options the first one is king to f8 but now queen captures on e7 is a checkmate that's why in this position black didn't play king to f8 instead he played king captures on d7 but as usual this move still does not save the game because now adolf anderson played bishop to f5 a double check and if you play king to c6 then bishop to d7 is a checkmate that's why in this position black played king to e8 but now bishop to d7 check again black has two options the first one is king to d8 but now bishop captures on e7 or pawn captures on e7 is a checkmate but black didn't play this move instead he played king to f8 but still bishop captures on e7 is a checkmate and that's how adolf anderson finished this game with the style so i hope you like this brilliant game of adolf anderson and if you like it Please like this video, subscribe to this channel to get more amazing and inspiring content.